Hello, I'm Diane Schumacher. Welcome to Dragon's Lair Update. It's tournament time. We'll follow Howard Community College's fall teams as they compete for Region 20 supremacy. Men's soccer leads off. Howard Community College battles Northern Virginia. Derek Watte anchors our coverage. And thanks, Diane. It's time for the postseason. The Region 20 champion will advance to the national tournament. The other five teams will see their season end over the next three rounds. Howard is limping into the tournament. The Dragons have lost three consecutive games that have not scored a goal during their losing streak. Midfielder Emmanuel Wright has missed the last four matches. Wright is still banged up, but he's set to make his return. Soccer analyst David Owasso will be with us for this Region 20 quarterfinal. David, how can Howard end this losing streak? Howard can end their losing streak today by basically coming in and establishing their possession game. When Howard establishes his possession game, it allows them to really dictate the tempo against whoever they're facing. It's going to be key for Coach Dragunov today as he's happy his talisman, Emmanuel Wright, returns. Wright is by far Howard's best player in the attacking third. Northern Virginia enters the tournament on a two-match win streak. The Nighthawks have scored nine goals during that stretch, and they'll be motivated to avenge their overtime loss to Howard. David, what do you expect to see from Nova? What I'm expecting to see from Nova is a very scrappy game. Nova are going to try to be very physical with Howard and look to see if they can capitalize off set pieces and things like that. They will look to see if they can stop Howard's possession game by being very physical with their midfielders. The winner moves on to the semifinals. The loser season is over. Let's go to the Dragon's Lair. First half, goal kick for Northern Virginia. Falls remain if. Lifts it above Brian Zapinski. Nova takes the lead. Very poor defending by Howard as a simple long ball goes over them due to a lack of depth by the center backs. Howard looking to respond. Walter Gonzalez. Jonathan Horrocks. Neo Gustandino shows off his moves. Gustandino withstands both challenges. Deep cross finds Gonzalez Emmanuel Wright. After three straight shutout losses, Howard is finally on the board. Excellent service from Gustandino and tremendous run by Gonzalez to get on the back post and square it back across goal again. Northern Virginia in possession. If marked by Gustandino, the free kick is awarded to Nova. Really harsh decision by the ref. Christopher Nunez through the wall scores. In less than two minutes, the Nighthawks regain the lead. Seven minutes till the half. Colin Sirio, fantastic ball forward. Right, here he goes, into Palung. Emphatic finish, Lung ties the game. Second half now, free kick for Nova. Nunez takes it, leaping save by Zapinski. Northern Virginia in possession. Nunez, if. Through ball ahead to Joshua Cornwell. Cornwell! Sapinski can't keep it out. Northern Virginia reclaims the lead. Awful defending again by Howard. They look for the offside decision and completely stop defending. 12 minutes remaining. The clear is broken up by Howard. Emmanuel Wright beats his man. Wright has room. Wright just off target. Four minutes to play, 50-50 ball. Lung with pressure, Gustandino wins it for Howard, pushes it to right. Surrounded by Nova shirts, still right, he beats out three defenders, Emmanuel Wright. Keeps Howard's season alive with a sensational effort, it's a tie game. Tremendous run with the ball and finish by Emmanuel Wright who's been an absolute standout for the Dragons all season long. We'll have two 10-minute overtime periods. First goal wins. Lung passes to right. One on one with the keeper. Latona comes out. And he saves the day for Nova. Here's a chance for Howard. Sirio's cross. Punched by Latona. Horrex to Lung, inside the 18. Lung, no, just off target. Final minute, if it remains scoreless, we'll go to penalty kicks. Michael Police sends it ahead to Elvis Hinosa. Keeps it going for Nova. If keeps his head up, goes to Josefat Latona. 
Northern Virginia wins it. Tremendous individual play by Latona to create a shooting opportunity with the defender right on his back. Great finish. When Howard look back at this game, they will see that certain defensive mistakes really cost them in the end. Northern Virginia puts an end to the Dragons' season. Four to three is your final. Let's send it down to Hamid Hosseini. There was a lot of facilitating and role playing involved in the game, but I also noticed some lack of communication on the field. So, Emmanuel, my question to you is, what could you have done to change that? Uh, obviously, we could have uh, communicated more better, uh, stay compact, and uh, avoid the mistakes we made, which caused the first goal. But it is what it is. Um. Now, both both of you being sophomores, what was your greatest learning experience leading up to this regional tournament? Um, I think for the team as a whole, the the best thing that they learned was that we had to be consistent. Like, we would have some games against College of Southern Maryland where we just dominate and win 3 nothing against a team we were supposed to have a close game against. But then Anne Arundel, a team that we should have beat, like, we just made a bunch of mistakes and lost 7-4 to four in the back. So, it's a, you have to be consistent is what we took out of it. Mm -hmm. Emmanuel? Uh, what I got from this season is uh, you have to get a positive attitude. Like, you have to listen to coaches, uh, do what they say and I keep positive and uh, good things will happen. Attitude is the most important thing. Yeah. Well, always a pleasure watching both of you and uh, I wish you all the best in the future. Right, thank you. Thank yeah. you. This is Dragon's Lair Update. I'm Omid Hosseini. And it's time for women's soccer. Howard battles arch rival Montgomery College in the Region 20 District Age Tournament. This rivalry has seen some of the decade's biggest upsets. In 2010, Montgomery College was undefeated and ranked number one in the nation when Howard stunned them in penalty kicks ending their season right then and there. Last year, Howard was 13-2, ranked number two in the nation, when Montgomery entering the match with a losing record kept a clean sheet against the Dragons, putting an end to Howard's season. Fearless, hardworking, impact midfielder Becky Minnelli is injured. She will not play against Montgomery. David Owassum is back for this must-see Maryland Derby. What does Howard need to do to get this win? For Howard to get the result today, Howard needs to do exactly what they've been doing all season. That's controlling the tempo of games with their possession and getting those deep line runs from their midfielders. When they get those runs from their midfielders, it allows them to create opportunities within the 18 to score. Montgomery College enters the tournament having won eight of their last nine matches. Five MC players return from the team that upset Howard in last year's semifinal. David, how can the Raptors take down Howard? The keys for the Raptors to take down Howard are for them today as a team to stay very compact defensively. When they're able to stay compact, it allows Howard not to break them down. It'll also be key for them whether when they win the ball in certain areas against Howard, they'll be able to get on the counter attack and create opportunities for themselves. And the time has come for another tense installment of the Howard MC robbery. Let's go to the highlights. First half, free kick just outside of the 18 for Howard. Liz Parks will take it. Off the crossbar, Parks inches from a sensational goal. Corner kick for Howard. Parks set to take it. Sends it back to Rebecca Coglin. Elisa Mobley on the back post. Mobley! The flag is up, the goal is disallowed. Howard is offside. Howard is very unlucky as the ref makes a mistake on an offside call and wipes away a tremendous finish and changes the whole dynamic of the game. Set piece for the Raptors now. Sonia Rada, dangerous ball, gets it inside the box. Claire Couturier unable to convert the empty netter. Montgomery in possession, 14 in white. Jen Craven with the challenge. Coglin's there for support. Craven wins it, what a touch. Just a bit too strong in the end, but the right idea from Craven. Jocelyn Flores. Rada, Flores. Still, Flores retains it in traffic. Chance for MC. Lockdown defense from Liz Parks. We're scoreless going into the break. Second half now. Coglin moves to the middle of the field. Keeps her head up. Sends a through ball to Savannah Holt. Two Dragons up with her. Holt shakes the defender. Here comes the cross. Elisa Mobley, no. 
good service in by Holt and tremendous effort by Mobley to try and get something on frame. Scary moment in the game. Violent collision between Jen Craven and Sonia Rada. Craven is down, she'll be checked out on the sidelines. Craven is arguably Howard's MVP. More pain for the Dragons, 17 in white. Sydney Rin Mason, stud midfielder, chasing down the ball. Ugly collision. Rin Mason is hurt, she's ruled out for the remainder of the match. So now Becky Minnelli, Jen Craven, Sydney Rin Mason are injured. Howard's midfield is depleted. Coglin moves it along to Brittany Nixon. What a touch by Nixon. She goes by Marianne Jones. Howard now in MC's final third. Nixon. Coglin. Holt. Rada wins the ball for Montgomery College. 28 minutes remaining. Craven is back out there. Breaks up the clear attempt. Craven creating terrific diagonal ball to Coglin. Still Coglin finds Holt in the middle. Holt, two touches onto her right, unable to break through the MC back line. Savannah Holt, four to Nikki Manning, up against Jones. Holt moves up and secures it for Howard. Gets down the left side. She has Craven in the middle. Rada puts an end to the chance. 14 minutes remaining. Montgomery plays it back. Celeste Costable's clear goes right in the back of Craven. Alejandra Ramos ignites the counter. Three Raptors up with her. Goes to Robin Hodgson. Hodgson has put MC in front. The nightmare continues for Howard Community College women's soccer. For the second consecutive season, after a remarkable regular season, they find themselves down 1-0 to Montgomery in the playoffs. Excellent counterattack by Montgomery after careless use of possession by Howard. 11 minutes to play, free kick for Howard. Parks, good ball into the box. Vital header from Sonia Rada. Ford with the foul. 24 seconds. Last chance for Howard to extend their season. Nixon goes to Holt. Triple team. Jones looking to clear. Coglin. Fontava makes the save. This one is over. Montgomery College once again clean sheet against the Dragons when it matters most. The Raptors end Howard's season. Not the prettiest game of soccer ever, but it was a very physical contest. Montgomery made the game an absolute slugfest. They didn't allow Howard to get into any rhythm in their possession, and that played into Montgomery's hands. And it's time for women's volleyball. Howard takes on Pennsylvania Highlands in the Region 20 District G Tournament. The winner of this match plays a fully rested number one C Lorain County Community College. Just three hours after the conclusion of this contest, Howard enters the tournament with an 18 and 13 record. The Dragons are led by all region 20, all Maryland Juco outside hitter, Chelsea Perinello. The power and versatility of Perinello has garnered the attention of several NCAA programs. Pennsylvania Highlands enters the playoffs with a 13 and six record. The Black Bears appear to be peaking at just the right time, winning four of their last five matches. The winner moves on, the loser goes home. Howard Pennsylvania Highlands is next. Let's go to the Dragon's Lair. First set, four win lead for Pennsylvania Highlands. Julia Boris, Chelsea Perinello puts the ball down. Big time shot from Howard's all region 20, all Maryland Juco outside hitter. Dragons serving PA Highlands. Sarah Fisher, back row attack, finds the floor, ends a 4-0 run for the Dragons. Boris Perinello pounds the ball. Dragons cut the deficit to two. 22-18, Pennsylvania Highlands now. Fisher gets herself in position and gets the point. Black Bears take the opening set, 25-22. Second set now. Boris. Taylor Bowen, Pennsylvania Highlands gets into their system. Sarah Fisher hammers it into the floor. Dragons went on a 5-2 run, the lead is now five. Stephanie Bartella, 10-4 Howard. Penn Highlands rallies to tie the set. 
looking to steal the second. Dragons run it up the gut to Bartella and she finds the soft spot. Howard holds on to win the set and tie the match. Third set, 1918 Howard. Pennsylvania Highlands serving the Dragons. Shiloh Yarn delivers a big right hand shot, sparks a 6-3 run. Set point now for the Black Bears. Good first touch by Paranello. Boris. Paranello loads up and keeps the set going. After a Howard kill, we're tied at 24. Carice Barracuso with an overpass. Bowen makes him pay. Set point now for Howard. The Dragons are fired up. Ensuing rally. Fisher buries it right in the middle of the floor. Howard serving Pennsylvania Highlands. Kaylee Carl goes to Kathleen Davey. Dragons can't control it. Black Bears win the third set, 30 to 28. Sloppy start to the fourth for Pennsylvania Highlands. 12 errors so far in the fourth set from the Black Bears. Boris, Essence Holtzclaw. Strong finish from Holtzclaw gives Howard a six point advantage. Dragons route Pennsylvania Highlands in the fourth set 25 to 12 and generate some momentum going into the fifth and deciding set. Black Bears serving Howard. Alia Mustafa finds the setter. Boris sets Paranello on the left. Too much power. Paranello gives Howard the lead. Pennsylvania Highlands is on a 3-0 run. Dragons send it over. Davey, well placed shot, gets the kill. Free ball. Black Bears get into their system. Carl, Kathleen, Davey. Pennsylvania Highlands regains control late in the fifth. But Howard responded with two unanswered. Dragons are two points away from completing the comeback. Carl, outside to Fisher, deflected at the net. Bartella keeps it going. Paranello sends it over. Close play, Carissa Ziesman goes for it. Unable to keep it going. Match point for the Dragons. Terrific work on defense from Howard. Season on the line for Pennsylvania Highlands. They get the free ball. Fisher outside to Jan, deflected yet again. Holtzclaw finds Boris, she's going to Paranello. Howard wins! Paranello saves the best for last. The Dragons move on to the District G semifinals. Let's send it down to Hamid Hosseini. Now tell me, Stephanie, what was your key to coming back after dropping in the third set? I think that after a few bad calls that we knew should have gone our way, we got the intensity back and we just killed them then. All right, so Chelsea, how can we get? How do you? How can you get the adrenaline going for the Lorraine game? Um, I think just a stronger warm up. We kind of took this past scene for granted and almost got beat because of it. So we just need to be strong all the way through, come in intense and be loud. It really communication is key. Tell us about the game winner, Chelsea. Um, well, they made a really good pass and a really good set. All I had to do was hit it. And my grandma drove ten hours here, and I could feel her breathing down my neck. So I just it was, everything was in slow motion. I just had to get it in. So it went in. Well, good luck on your next game. <laughs> I'm Omid Hosseini for Dragons Let Update. Next, Howard takes on the defending District G champions, Lorraine County. The Commodores were two points shy of winning the national championship in 2014. They enter the tournament with a 19 and 11 record. Lorraine averages over 12 kills per set. Emily Mandoke accounts for a large amount of those. The sophomore out of Elyria, Ohio, averages over four kills per set. She's ranked number five in the nation at the D3 level. Howard looks to upset Lorraine next. Let's go to the Dragon's Lair. Opening set, free ball for Lorraine. Katie Whistle outside to Emily Mando. The kill is made. Eight point lead now for the Commodores. Lorraine gets into their system. Big time shot from Mando. Lorraine closes the set with a 9-5 run to win it 25-11. Second set, Howard serving Lorraine. Whistle goes to Marissa Kellick and she flat out obliterates the ball. Stanziano again able to get the Commodores going on offense. Kellick splits the block. This was a set to forget for the Dragons. Lorraine wins the second set 25-9. Does Howard have one last comeback in him? Paranello handles the serve. Julia Boris. Paranello gives Howard the lead. 12 kills on the day for the All Region 20, All Maryland Juco sophomore. Later in the third, Mandog with a big swing. Alia Mustafa digs it out. Boris. Paranello gets the kill. Dragons start to assert themselves. But the Commodores come back to complete the sweep. Lorraine went on to win the district championship. The Commodores finished fifth at the Nationals, let's go to Amit Hussain. 
You had a couple hours to spare right after your victory against PA Highlands. To take us through your pre-game preparations. Um, so we ate a lot. Like, you know, you got to make sure you have the right fuel for the next game. And then um, we talked about, we knew they were going to be, a, you know, a tough team to beat coming in. So, you know, we just talked about what we needed to do, play our own game, like play our game. Not let if we do get a run or if they do get a run, don't let that affect us. You know, just keep playing our game. And we just like came together as a team, I think. Tell us, what did you take away from this game? This game, it really showed me how great of a team I have. We're all very supportive of each other. We all have strengths of our own, weaknesses of our own, but we come together great as a team. No matter how far we were down, we came back. We never got down on each other and we fought. And it really showed me that a team can be like a great support system on and off the court. So tell me, what, what's, what's plans for Taylor? What are your future plans? Do you plan to stick with volleyball? I do not, actually. I am transferring to a large university, and I am planning on doing ROTC for the Air Force. So I'm not going to have time to play volleyball, which is really sad, but it's a better decision for me. And I just, I've learned great study habits, great like team devotion that I know I'm going to be able to take away for the rest of my life, even if I'm not playing volleyball. Mm -hmm. And these past two seasons at HTC have been the best experience of my life. Congratulations on a very successful season. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm Omid Hosseini for Dragon's Lair Update. My first guest led Howard Community College women's volleyball to 19 wins, the program's best record since 2012. Head coach Gary Troy is here. Welcome, coach. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about the highlights of the season. Uh, I think two of the highlights uh, would probably be uh, our win against Hartford up in the Rhode Island tournament and our win against Rhode Island in the Rhode Island tournament. Uh, that was a really hard fought uh, battle and you could really see the girls. Uh, that was uh, a match I think the, the girls really came together as a team and uh, you could just see it. They, they really focused in on it. it. was Like I said, it was, that was probably the most emotional match that they played all year. I hear we're losing our assistant coach, Midday. That's, uh, that's a possibility. Uh, Midday is looking at going to graduate school. And uh, of course, all the players are not very happy with it. They all, all the sophomores want her to come back for one more year. And I said, well, that's not really fair to Midday because the freshman next year will want her to come back the following year. I said, so that's a never ending cycle. <laughs> so sure. uh, so they're all, they were all telling them, they were all threatening to quit if she didn't coach. And they said, well, who's that gonna hurt? <laughs> and that, but uh, yeah, uh, she was a real, she's a real intricate, you know, part of the program and she's continuing to uh, uh, help me recruit during the, uh, during the off season uh, coming up. And then if she doesn't go away to graduate school, then she'll be back. So what does she bring to, to our program? Uh, she brings, she's able, because number one, she's younger. Uh, she's able to relate to a lot of the uh, girls on a one-on-one -on -one basis, a lot of the players. Plus, she, 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 can be, she can be strict, but she also knows how to uh, have fun with the players and to celebrate with them. So she challenges them um, on that, and uh, she just has a, a great rapport with the players. So we're losing how many players? We're losing four. Uh, Chelsea and Stephanie are... Uh, like I said, possibly going to Frostburg to play. Um, Taylor Bowen, uh, she, uh, she's got offers right now to go, not playing uh, volleyball, but academically to go to Clemson, North Carolina, uh, Charlotte. And also I'm hearing that she uh, uh, has been instructed by her advisor to apply for Stanford, uh, Duke, and Penn. And Penn. Wow. And, um, and that, so she's... Uh, She's very accomplished in her in her studies, along with being a very good uh, team player. And then uh, Brittany Boyce, uh, it looks like uh, I don't know what the second school is, but it looks like she may be going to Temple. Wow! Uh, so that's even great because uh, you know a lot of people will question, well, why do we want to go to a, a, a junior college, you know, a community college, and here's four girls that are going to go on to four-year schools and some pretty good four-year schools when they start talking Stanford, Duke, Temple. Those are outstanding schools. I yes. mean, those are big we, Division yeah. One programs, whether yeah. they play or not, right. just the opportunity to uh, feel comfortable and confident to, yeah. to take that next step. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, Coach, good luck with a short break, mm -hmm. and we'll be doing this again next, oh, next yes. season. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. 
Up next, cross-country head coach Steve Musselman talks nationals. Learning at home. Learning in the classroom. Learning for success. For learning that works for you, choose Howard Community College. To find courses and programs that fit your schedule and learning style, visit hcclearningworks.com. You can get there from here. Welcome back. My next guest just brought home the men's cross country Region 20 and Maryland JUCO titles. He was named the U.S. Track and Field and Cross Country Coaches Association East Region Coach of the Year. Steve Musselman joins me now. Welcome, Coach. Thanks, Diane. Tell us a little bit about the Region 20 meet. The Region 20 meet was always exciting. Uh, for, for the women, we knew it would come down between us and Anne Arundel. And Anne Arundel got us. They, were, they, they did very well this year, and, and so did we. It was, it was a good race. Uh, for the men, our, you know, we're also competing for the JUCA. We knew competition would come from College of Southern America in Hagerstown. But we have a lot of depth on the men this year. And that's what made us so strong. Uh, Potomac State is our, the other Region 20 Division III team that at, aspires to be where we want to be. All his conversations with his team center around us, which is flattering and a little funny at times. But, um, but we, we did very well. You know, we, we, we defended our titles. And uh, like I said it was our first win against Hagerstown in several years. So we were quite pleased with that. So let's get to Nationals. What was Nationals like? Give us the highlights. I was quite pleased. For the women's race, uh, our goal was, again, top 10. And we had some goals set for some of our individual women. Uh, Maggie, going around the part of the loop, and she headed to the woods. She was running six. And when she came out, she was fourth. And I said, you know, let's keep this going. And she ended up uh, finishing fourth overall, first team All-American. Is that the best ever finish for a female that, runner here That at is our top placing female in the 30 years of the program. And how about our men? The men uh, going in, and there's a lot of strategy involved. There's matchups. You know, we, we pretty much knew it, we need to stay with Harper within the first half of the race. If we knew we were okay, we were fine. You know, we, we could be in contention. Um, sometimes in our sport, things happen. Our, our number two runner, went out way too fast. Oh, he, he was just too, so excited, went out fast above his abilities, and he ended up being my number seven runner that day. And, and that hurt, and I knew halfway into the race that we were gonna be fighting for second and third. Um, what I, I really admire about this team the most is a, after the race, two of the guys were sobbing because they thought they let the team down. Again, giving a big hug, I said, no, you put it out there. And he goes, well, I went out too fast, I said, well, yeah, you did, but there's nothing we can do about it now. But now we move on and get ready for other things. But you need to learn from this. And he goes, you've told me before. I said, yes, yes, I did. Now we're going to fix this, right? He goes, yes, coach, we'll fix it for the future. But they did some great things. Good luck, coach, and we'll do it again next year. Thank you, Diane. Thanks for watching. And remember, go Dragons.